Okay, good afternoon. Thank you for joining us once again for another session of Chrome Guided Smile. And this is the last in the series of four on, on, on the product Chrome Guided Smile and its use. And uh, next Tuesday, uh, we'll have another program that relates around full arch, patient selection, the workup to Chrome, Chrome Guided Smile. But this last session, we're going to, as they say, you uh, drive for show and putt for dough. So today we're going to putt for dough, and that is uh, the final prosthetic, the, the temporary prosthetic deliberative surgery, and all that encompasses that task. So I'm Alan. I work with Roe Dental Laboratory, and Roe is the uh, main main producer, the producer of Chrome Guided Smile, the IT behind it, the development, the R and D, uh, and uh, really control most aspects of the product and uh, provide this product in all fifty states and even on a couple different continents. It's a wonderful thing to be involved in. So, didn't update my slide, but. Uh, today is Friday, nano ceramic prosthetics and the rapid appliance are the items we're going to cover. So let me just start with the video like we do every program. Wrapped up into one industry leading full arch product. Developed in both the clinical and laboratory environment, Chrome delivers the doctor and patient a pre-planned service for bone reduction, osteotomy creation, implant and multi-unit abutment indexing, and an integrated nano prosthetic. There are no comparable services in the world like Chrome. It's available for nearly all implant systems, offers full visualization during surgery, minimally invasive exposure, a fully pre-planned surgery with implant indexing, a beautifully crafted and integrated prosthetic, and a level of precision planning that is unique in the industry for implants, components, and prosthetics. Chrome delivers what is expected by the patient and the doctor every time, for every patient. After patient, after patient, after happy patient. It's time you try Chrome and its family of products and services for your next full arch surgery. Let me just mention also that uh, uh, you know in these in these presentations, uh, it's it's us lecturing and then doing a chat at the end. But if you are interested in uh, spending some one-on-one -on -one time with us, uh, we can host a one-on-one -on -one meeting with anyone in the country in the world. Uh, just simply contact Chris Moore here at the laboratory. That's Chris at R O E Dental lab.com chris at roaddentalab.com or just call the laboratory and we will arrange a one-on-one -on -one meeting with you to go through the whole protocol of chrome step by step or even to discuss a specific case that you have we'd love to hear from you so what does chrome got its smile i like to read this paragraph for all these programs uh, it's a pre-planned surgery that starts with a smile simulation and ends with a predictable method of delivering the final restoration Chrome delivers bone reduction guidance, osteotomy guidance, implant control, abutment insertion, and a simplified prosthetic conversion and very simplified method of converting to the final restoration. Of course, today we're gonna to work on converting the prosthetic uh, during surgery. So we're gonna go through a little bit of the, the smile, the workup, that type of thing. I, I, I like sharing this case, this patient, we're gonna have a testimonial her, for her on the next slide. Uh, but just look, look what we did here. Look what Chrome did, look what the doctor did. Um, on the left was her before smile. Uh, this was a, a denture. And teeth were you know, in a pretty nice position. Midline was probably off a little bit. We corrected that in the smile simulation. Right, so the middle picture there is just a simulation. It's not the, not the final. So we moved her midline over a little bit. Uh, she wanted her teeth a little bit longer, which we did, just a, just a tick. Then we made chrome and went to surgery. 
And then we delivered what, uh, what we promised, what the doctor promised. Uh, beautiful maxillary, uh, chrome guided smile prosthetic that followed the smile simulation, which is our goal on, on every case. So let's, let's just hear from It took a long time preparing for my case. That was the first thing I was impressed with. The second thing I was impressed with is that the technician flew in from Cleveland to oversee the installation because that's the most important part, clearly. And the third thing is that it was relatively pain-free. I have a low pain threshold and they met it. With a little tweaking, but I feel fine. I'm a half hour out of surgery and I'm going to take an hour's nap. I've already posted on Facebook and people have already said, well done. So I'm pleased. I'm a happy camper and I would be a great advertiser. Thank you so much. <laughs> we appreciate it. Yeah, absolutely. So 30 minutes out of surgery. She's feeling good enough to, to post her video and her selfie in before and afters on Facebook and other media outlets. I believe she's the media person uh, up in the Northeast. And isn't, isn't that something? Uh, you know, we've, we've completed, um, I think, about 6,000 cases so far in the past two and a half years. And uh, we've attended just hundreds and hundreds of surgeries as we travel the country training doctors on Chrome, uh, training its training how it's used throughout surgery. Uh, you know, we, we charge for chair side assistance, uh, but it's totally worth it. Have us come out, spend the morning. We teach you and, um, and the team the whole step, the whole process. Uh, and our goal is um, that you, you take over after that one appointment with us. Uh, and then you don't need a laboratory technician for a Chrome guided smile moving forward after that. So that's our, that's our goal. Uh, and today we're going to talk about these two items, right? So we've been through uh, in, in our series, in our session here, we've been through the pin guide, the fixation base, the osteotomy guide, uh, the carrier guide, and then now we're going to work on the prosthetic and the rapid appliance, the duplicate prosthetic in detail. So interestingly, uh, there are, you know, there's, a, there's some IP around this product and there's some uh, patented technology and patent pending technology. And it's kind of funny how, um, how technologies and ideas come full circle. I know that there are a couple other companies out there trying to use some of this technology and using this technology, but this is one of our first generations. This was a long time ago. I mean, relatively a uh, long time ago. And uh, we had this process where the pin guide would go in, but the pin guide was essentially the teeth. Um, um, and, then, and then the pin guide was removed, the tissue was reflected, and then the osteotomy guide goes in, the teeth go in through this process of exchanging pins. The pins would come in and out four times, five times during a surgery. And then when you're at the very end, you have to convert this uh, appliance into a beautiful prosthetic. And that's a challenge. Uh, we have lots of pictures of uh, removing these sleeves and leaving, uh, you know, an exposed sub substrate um, under under the pink, and it's just not very aesthetic. It's a lot of work. It's tedious after you know a morning of doing surgery. Uh, this was another rendition of it. I don't put a generation on here. I'm not even sure at what point we made these, but again, pin prosthetics, uh, not not convenient to convert at all. Uh, this is one that we still make occasionally. Uh, this is a limited space prosthetic, but we really try to avoid this one too. You can see the, uh, the, the loops. These loops connect right down into the fixation base and we bypass the carrier guide because there's limited space. This is a limited space chrome prosthetic, uh, but we try to make it so that the adjustment is, is minimized. So really today, this is what we want to deliver. Uh, and we're, we're going to have some evolutions on this as well regarding the holes coming up with some software updates and, uh, and some techniques and little different products that might, um, might make these holes a little bit smaller. But the prosthetics that we make today are beautiful. Every time one of these goes out the door, they're, they're just, they're gorgeous. They're, they're, uh, they're essentially STLs of denture teeth set to follow a smile design. 
all designed uh, based on hard and soft tissue implant position. They're gorgeous. We use a pink composite. Um, we use some, we, we consider them proprietary materials. Um, but the prosthetics are beautiful, just prettier than a denture for sure. Uh, in fact, we always sometimes get the complaint, we make them too nice because then the patient doesn't want to come back, uh, you know, to, to receive their final restoration because they left with such a gorgeous appliance. So today's topics, uh, bottom left is the uh, nano prosthetic. Uh, materials always evolve with our laboratory. We're always on the cutting, bleeding edge of technology. And so products do evolve, do change. Um, try to keep a more of a generic name, not to confuse um, our our customers, uh, but products are changing and the nano ceramics that we were making are turning into other materials now that are, that are even better than milled PMMA. Uh, the bottom right is the rapid appliance. Uh, I've seen other companies out there using this type of duplicate pickup. Um, we make it in tooth color. I think it helps a lot when the patient comes in to convert to the final restoration. And we have other options with that too. You can actually add pink to it and you can even make it a, uh, a solid long-term strong prosthetic. Uh, let's, we'll have to have a chat about that uh, when, you, when you have a case going, but you can, you can order it uh, so that the patient can wear it long-term or you'd have a real sturdy backup. Uh, the printed try is merely just for clinical use in this, in this um, the main package. And then the backup denture. We'll talk just briefly about the backup dentures and uh, material selection. So the topics, smile design for nano. Spend a little bit of time on smile design. That really is the reason our, our prosthetics are uh, beautiful because of the, the workup with the smile. Uh, we'll talk a little bit about the setup and we're gonna go through a lot of tips of do's and don'ts. Talk a lot about the rapid appliance and the backup denture and of course the process of conversion that will be in there too, and a final restorative options in our package. So I, I, I love this slide. Uh, not, not, you know, not to be offensive at all to the companies along the bottom. I don't mean it like that at all. However, they are uh, essentially all on four, all of them. They take a conventional denture, uh, they freehand implants, sometimes guided, but usually freehand the implants, uh, and then go through an all on four uh, conversion process, right? And, and that means implants are free handed in our, our opinion. I mean, we're, we're on uh, number, I don't know, 75,000 cases uh, guided, of guided surgery since 2004. Um, and uh, three times that, four times that number of restorative cases. And I have, I may say so. If I'm the patient, I want guided. I'm going to have the implants exactly where I want them, the abutments, the prosthetics, the screw access, uh, the restoration. Everything is more ideal when it's guided properly. So these types of cases are freehand uh, and, a, and a, a blockout. Sometimes real simple blockout. A denture is uh, backfilled with some blue mousse or some kind of a PVS impression material. The hole is found because of the cylinder. You drill, pop the holes through the denture, uh, add some acrylic uh, to pick up the parts, and then a dental technician um, you know, grinds away all the excess acrylic, the pallet or on the mandible, the, uh, the flanges, and then you have a denture after, uh, depending on the experience of the technician, 45 minutes, an hour, two hours. It's usually a longer day. It's a patient comes at seven in the morning and leaves at you know, noon, one, two o'clock in the afternoon for these cases. I know some doctors do it quicker and they have a team. They got it really down to a system, but for the most part, it's a long process. And I, I think a denture conversion is not as, uh, not as ideal as a pre-planned case like I had smile. So that's the surgical part of it. But then what happens down the road when the patient comes in to go to the final restoration. Now there are tricks. Uh, there are special mounting tricks with um, models and analogs that you can take uh, the all on four prosthetic and do a conversion flasking technique. But for the most part, you start over. Stock tray to make a custom tray, uh, to do a bite block and a fit verification jig, screw down setup, maybe a reset, fabricate the bar, put the bar on the teeth, put the teeth on the bar, 
probably another reset maybe, uh, and then go to final. Now that's seven appointments. Uh, most appointments are two weeks, three weeks apart, times seven, 21 weeks. That's a long time to go through the conversion process. I have seen several spreadsheets on the efficiencies and time, chair time, cost of these, and uh, it, it's, it's not pretty. Um, so you have to find very efficient ways to convert these prosthetics and make it affordable for the restorative doctor. So our answer to that is the rapid appliance. It's a brilliant solution. With Chrome Guided Smile, we have two different solutions. One's a rapid appliance, one's the iJig. We're gonna cover both of them, but the rapid appliance is uh, becoming incredibly popular uh, with easy, simple conversion. So that's our answer to all the other options out there on the, on the market for doing full arch restorations, our simplified, simplified approach for either yourself or for the referring doctor uh, whom you work with. But all Chrome, cases do start with photography. Uh, we like it to be excellent photography. I have an image here of an SLR camera. Really, it's optional. Um, the new iPhones and some of these fancy phones out there do take great pictures. Um, they, they, uh, most of the uh, devices, though, don't have great flash. And so you really don't get light back into the mouth uh, very well without the flash. And when you do have a flash, it really washes out. So an SLR camera is better. And the reason we want a fancy picture, a nice high res picture with a nice depth of field, in other words, uh, the patient's nose and the ears are in focus, is so that we can make a beautiful smile simulation to share with the patient, to share with you, to make sure that we are on the same page uh, with the case. Where are we going with this case? We want to know from the beginning. And then, of course, the left, right, and center retracted. This is a perfect picture. You can see the ears, the ears and the hair is in perfect focus. The nose is in focus to full depth of field. There's light in the mouth. Uh, this is a, a very simple uh, uh, simulation for preview to complete. And the image on the, on the right, the images of before and after can be put on a giant screen in your treatment room. Uh, email to the patient, share with the patient, cell phone, but even large images of, of these befores and afters uh, are evident. You'll see how clear they are, just crystal clear. You know, nice photograph. This preview company is the best we've ever seen, ever worked with. Uh, they're, they, their smile simulations, their teeth are based on STL files that we use to set up cases. Now think of the significance of that. You do a smile simulation, you can do it in your office in about um, two minutes. Uh, I sometimes say uh, three minutes or so, and they tell me, no, tell them it's a minute and a half. Okay, fine, it's a minute and a half, they're quick. And I'll show you a video here in just a minute how, how easy it is to do a smile simulation. But the point is that this company partnered with us and they took smiles of human teeth, natural teeth, don donator teeth as they call them, donator smiles, and they, um, they morphed the teeth, that they, they changed the shape of the teeth of natural, of human teeth into the shape of our STL files for denture teeth. And so what that means is that when we perform a setup, when we do a setup in our software, uh, we are using their actual smiles. Is it a one-to-one? -one? No, it's not a one-to-one, -one, but it's very close. It's an A to an A plus, putting the teeth in the right place, because remember, uh, unlike a crown and bridge or veneer smile simulation, this is, uh, on, on a lot of cases we do, anything inside the lips is removed and replaced with chrome guided smile prosthetics. So very easy to accomplish the smile simulations. And we have, uh, we've built an entire um, library. Uh, it's, it's, it's a little bit limited, you know, ovoid, triangular, rectangular, and square. But if you ever go to your lab and you hang out with a person who uh, picks denture teeth, you'll find that they pretty much pick the same six. <laughs> doesn't seem to matter whether it's uh, uh, age or, well, I, I don't want to narrow it down too much, but uh, six basic shapes that they pick. And so we picked four, and these are, these are the popular smiles that we use. And the, the, the catalog can be shared with the patient, with the staff. You can use it in your, in your treatment. Um, 
a consult and pick a smile and that's what we'll deliver all right this patient wanted square um, square teeth to do a smile simulation if patient decides oh you know i want something a little bit different we want let's do something a little more ovoid we just change it put the patient put the case on hold for a day and we change it and show them a new smile simulation so let's do let's let me show you um a smile simulation in action this software is not expensive at all uh, i think it's 199 dollars for unlimited turn the volume down here um, you contact the company they're they're wonderful to work with it's just, you know it's um, not not a pressure sale at all in fact what they really want to do is do demos uh, with your team um, you, you you schedule online in one of those calendly um, calendar events gather your team around the computer around the TV and watch them as they give a demo on the smile um, simulation software they will have your team doing these types of smiles in a minute and a half or two minutes so patients in hygiene uh, patient has been coming in for years they are on the fence they they need dentistry they want dentistry uh, uh, they either need to know what they what they're going to look like they need a little coaxing the patients are visual you know you can have all the type of dance you want uh, chair side uh, but for a patient this is what they want to see they want to see the teeth in their smile. Now you can see all the little levers that they can move here. So based upon how the photograph was taken, uh, rotated face, uh, whether the camera is too high or too low, uh, they can change the tissue color, the tooth color, um, lots of variations. And then you just simply type in um, the patient, the office. It's, it can be customized for you with your logo. And then you can either print or email it to the patient. It's brilliant shows up in their inbox or of course you just save it as a jpeg put it on your big screen and and have a consult with the patient so that's preview uh p-r-e-v-u google them uh do an online meeting with them buy the software it does it have to be for chrome sure uh it can be for an immediate denture crown and bridge they have a wonderful uh crown and bridge uh veneer simulator uh, that you can you can do yourself uh, for, for a very low cost. Okay. Smile simulation. So, so what do we do with them? Uh, patient accepts the smile or the doctor doesn't, the patient doesn't always see these. Uh, sometimes the patient's already accepted. We move forward and we do a smile simulation anyway in, in house, uh, whenever we need to, uh, maxillary, uh, cases where the patient really needs a new smile. That's where we mostly complete them or double arch. If a patient has an existing denture, you know, not, not so much, not so often, unless they need some changes. Okay, smile simulation is pulled into the software. So what you see on the top left, this is the patient's, uh, well that, um, I probably really put these in the wrong order. So on the top right, this is the patient's existing denture, the purple. On the left is the workup, all right? This is the new setup that we have completed. The whole time we're doing this, we are using the image on the right. This is a simulation that we, um, that we promised the patient. Bottom left are the two put together, the model and the, and the workup. And then uh, bottom right is that's where the final tooth position is going to be. A uh, patient does not see this. This is just for internal uh, coordination of the case to make sure that we are doing what we promised. All right, so just some setup images. Use some very sophisticated software. One of the nice things about digital is that the study model, the purple, sometimes a bite block, sometimes a study cast, sometimes a smile simulation, it's always there as a reference with digital. You know, if you're, if you're setting teeth on, a, on, a, on an articulator and you remove the wax to put teeth, you lose your reference, the wax is gone. Digitally, it's always there. It's very, uh, very convenient to keep working, working on the case. So we, we complete the setup, we go through the online meeting, we do all that, all the things that we do to get these cases ready and we send you, uh, we send you the package um, to surgery. And the components that we're talking about today uh, are the nano ceramic. The nano ceramic prosthetic sits on top of the carrier guide. There are um, male components on the carrier guide. There are holes on the intaglio of the prosthetic that plug into that this, that this plugs into. So it's a male female relationship. They plug. It's snug. They don't move. 
uh, and they fit snug right down onto, uh, onto the carrier guide. Uh, the holes on the carrier guide will match the holes in the Nano, same size. Uh, six millimeters wide on a straight, seven millimeters wide on an angle uh, to account for the, the, you know, the, the, the challenges of putting angled implants in. And um, yes, and the uh, carrier guide is three millimeters thick as we discussed in the previous sessions. Three millimeters thick to simulate tissue. So when the tissue is flapped back, the prosthetic should meet the tissue. Let's go through, there's two times to use the prosthetic. One, the first time, and this is optional, but a lot of doctors when they're finished, you know, a lot of doctors when they're finished with the bone reduction, they'll use the carrier guide, first of all, to check to make sure the bone reduction is complete and the tissue is out of the way. So it's just kind of a try in. And then they'll load the prosthetic on top of the carrier guide, snug the two together, make sure it fits just right, flush down, and then manipulate the patient into the bite. Now, why, why do this? Uh, because, and then, and then go on about the surgery. But why, why do this step? Uh, it's, as I mentioned, it's, you know, it's optional, but it's almost like it's kind of a peace of mind uh, midway, through the, midway through the morning or afternoon uh, that the bite is gonna be right um, when you get to the end. So that's just a try and some doctors do it, some doctors don't, but it's a nice, uh, nice option. So let's say, since we're at the prosthetic inversion part, um, implants are in, abutments are in, temporary cylinders are in, carrier guide is loaded, locked into the uh, fixation base, and the platform above that is what supports uh, the prosthetic, right? So in every case, we include these green gaskets for blocking out the temp cylinders. And then we include these little blue plugs to block out the prosthetic. So I'm, I'm gonna show a few of the, this could be kind of on, on, on repeat here moving forward for several slides. But the idea here, I th think it's kind of obvious that we, um, we sleeve these over the top so that material cannot get underneath the temporary cylinder and lock in the prosthetic, very important. Extremely important. It's the last thing you want to have to happen is um, any, any parts being locked in in surgery. So we'll always use our green gaskets. They're very thin, paper thin. So even if there's one on top of the other, uh, even, even three on top of each other, they're so thin that it really won't make much of a difference. And then, uh, and then the blue plugs. And the blue plugs are wonderful. It's better than scrambling around the office looking for some uh, little wooden stick or peg to put in the hole. Uh, these things uh, fit perfectly. Let's go through. Um, let's go through a video here. So, carrier guide is in. The green gaskets are sleeved over the temporary cylinders. All right. So now everything is protected. And then, I'll show these sleeving in here. All right. And then the prosthetic is sleeve delivered over all of the temporary cylinders, snug down nice and tight. And then the blue plugs go in. Let me just mention here that um, it's always challenging to get intraoral pictures. Tough to get uh, tough to get video and photography during these surgeries. Um, you know, we have some KOLs have done a very nice job with that. Dr. Gans, Dr. Dowell, a few other doctors out there really appreciate it. Um, if, if you, when you complete a case and you, you capture, um, really good video of it, we'd love to have it for teaching. Um, hard to believe after all these thousands of cases, it's tough to, um, to string together videos for, for, uh, for training, but, uh, blue plugs are in now that's blocked out. The green's blocked out. The, the, the cylinders are now protected. And then you just simply use, um, a material to backfill. In the video here, this is, this is QuickUp that we're using, uh, which is a, a self-cure only material. This is a material that we used for the first couple of years. Um, we've really kind of drifted away from, uh, from VOCO. We still offer it as an option. Some doctors um, really like to use it, but really I think if we do 100 cases, only about three or four now are VOCO. We've moved to this other material, which 
I'll describe in detail coming up. So with, with that material, with VOCO, it's self-cure. So a minute and 20 seconds, um, making sure the prosthetic is in place, doesn't move, and then uh, unscrew the prosthetic. All, right, all six screws come out. And all right, prosthetic comes out. So this is what it should look like whenever the prosthetic comes out. Uh, normally, the green gaskets come with it. They're uh, they're they're stuck a little bit to um, you know to the looting material that you used. So this is perfect. This is exactly what it should look like when it comes out of the mouth. And the material is fl is flowed around each cylinder very well. As you can see, all these cylinders are very well attached to the prosthetic. And when we go through our troubleshooting and our do's and don'ts, you'll find that, that when you remember, remember this slide, go back to the slide in your mind, you'll remember how, how nice this looked. It's very, very important. So this is what the prosthetic looked like when it came out. Okay, so two primary materials for the looting. Oh, and, and believe it or not, that was the, that was the conversion. I mean, it, it's hard to do anything quicker than that. Temp cylinders go in, uh, they're blocked out, you put the prosthetic in, you backfill, you unscrew, you remove it. It cannot get much simpler. Uh, 15 minutes, maybe 20, perhaps. It's a quick process. Uh, the material on the left is what we were showing in the video of this VOCO self-cure, uh, but we've really moved um, all, all of our um, promotion standards uh, to the stellar material. It's a dual cure which is really nice uh, to have. We'll go over the, the times on that a little bit later. But the dual cure part is nice when you wanna tack in the prosthetic uh, while you're working around the arch. Uh, you can purchase that material through us or through Taub, the, the, the Taub company, but we can sell it in bulk if, you, um, if you'd like to purchase it from us. So Prosthetic comes out of the mouth. This is not the same prosthetic we saw in the video, but this will show the technique. So prosthetic comes out of the mouth, it goes back in the laboratory, it's cleaned, um, cleaned with water. Um, you should wear gloves. This person is not wearing any gloves. You wanna wear gloves for sure. Uh, and then with, um, with, with the quick up material, you had to use a, an adhesive. One of the reasons we kind of moved away from it. So you would have to put it, you see your brushing adhesive down here around the cylinders, and then you would backfill the gap, uh, backfill the gap between the cylinder and the prosthetic. All right, so you can see this is just gonna be flowed down in here. It's a nice angled, narrow tip. Backfill it, flip the prosthetic over, uh, fill around the temporary cylinders, um, and then you'll see that the metal is adjusted. These are unadjusted. And you, when you're adjusting the prosthetic, come over here and uh, adjust the acrylic, adjust the metal down to the occlusion is just right, and then polish, and then take it back to the mouth and screw it in. That's the conversion, not complicated. Uh, this particular case, you see the sutures there, this was an edentulous uh, double arch case. I like this picture, the prosthetic looks just perfect. It's Dr. Dr. Towell and Dr. Peck. So thank you for those images. So as mentioned, we do a lot of these. I have a whole library of, uh, of surgeries documented, uh, you know, befores and afters. And I think our, our many, many doctors out there do a wonderful job. I made this slide this morning. These are befores and afters, All right? So there's two rows here. The top left is before, just underneath it is an after, before, after, before, after hundreds and hundreds of documented cases. So, very nice work. So that's the conversion of the prosthetic. Um, wanna go through a whole bunch of tips of do's and don'ts, because these are critical when you're, uh, when you're in the middle of surgery and, and issues come up. Um, we'll have you please keep in mind these, these do's and don'ts as we go through them. So one of them is kind of a neat trick, is uh, if you're, if you're working with angled implants and they're not perfectly centered in the middle of the hole, you'll find that because sometimes the rotation of the implant was, wasn't perfectly timed and the temp cylinder is contacting uh, the prosthetic. Put the prosthetic in the mouth, take a Sharpie, and just mark where to adjust it. 
and then take it out of the mouth, make a little adjustment, and then, uh, and then take it back and pick up the temporary cylinders. Simple tip, right? Uh, adjust the acrylic outside of the mouth, just a suggestion. I mean, I know there's suction and water and everything can be clean, but it is an open wound. And um, I would remove the prosthetic, adjust it, and then re-deliver the prosthetic. Uh, if you do not add sufficient material or it's a contaminated wall inside the prosthetic, uh, wet, blood, that type of thing, and you don't use enough material, it may, uh, the material may contact that bloody or, uh, or wet area and not stick. And then your prosthetic comes out and one of these cylinders is loose or drops out. Uh, that's not fun because then you have to go back to the mouth and re-pick it up again. So use a sufficient amount of material uh, circumferentially on the temp cylinder. Um, we highly recommend using our approved products initially. I know that there are other products out there. Um, uh, ERA pickup material, uh, just re uh, you know, using resin, using Duralay, using uh, re other acrylics, composite materials. Uh, look, we've we've tested all these materials. We've seen um, we've seen the breakage. We've seen the prosthetics come out. The prosthetics break because of the the, the demand over three, four, five, six months that this material has to have around the temp cylinder, which is, which is pretty simple to have it loot to the temp cylinder. But it also has to bond to the inside wall of the prosthetic. Those two materials have to be compatible or you will have breakage, the prosthetic will break. And that is a real disaster for the patient. So please use our products. Um, Bob, for, for instance, you for sure use their product. It's wonderful. And here are the, here, here are the numbers. It's 120-second self-cure. So it's just like Boco in case you were um, you know, using it. So 120-second self-cure. 20-second full light cure, which is quick, and that is very handy when you know that you have all the material in and you're ready to go to the next phase. Why wait for two minutes? Hit it with a light. And then a six-second tack. So as you're working around the arch, uh, perhaps you're holding the prosthetic in, perhaps there's uh, any, any little situations going on, six seconds, hit it with a light and, uh, and off you go. And you do not need an adhesive, just one material. Uh, and pink is not the only option. You know, for, for um, the, the, the years we were working with um, the other material, uh, really pink was the only option, but now because it is uh, because we're recommending the stellar material. And you can you can use both. We actually include both pink and white with a chrome surgery with a package. Uh, it's an a la carte. Sorry, not with the package. It's an a la carte item. We don't force you to purchase the material. You have to make the choice. But it comes in white, comes in pink, and you can use a little bit of uh, creativity, a little bit of um, art artistry, and um, just use white around the teeth. Uh, this probably is a little backwards, uh, but I was just wanted to show you the white and how it's pretty close to the patient's natural, I mean, the patient's new tooth color. So that's the package pink, pink and white. Uh, another tip, this is a shimming technique, and this is uh, not used very often, fortunately. Uh, we take great pains to make sure that cases are articulated properly, the arc of closures have been accounted for when opening the bites, that the setups are right, that, every, that our processes and our quality control and all the engineering that we do make sure that the bites are correct at surgery because that is key. You don't want to go through a whole surgery and then have to adjust to have kind of a prosthetic. So if you find, in, in this case, for instance, uh, the contact was in the anterior first and the posterior dropped down to meet the occlusion, well, Conventional wisdom would say, well, just seat the posterior, grind the lingual of the anterior into a closed bite position and move on. Well, uh, is that patient open or closed? I don't know that that's even that, that important at this stage, uh, but we want to minimize the amount of occlusal adjustment. So instead, use a shim. And there are um, you know, different tools in the office that you can use, but the, but the point is have the patient close down so that the teeth come together, put a shim between the prosthetic and the carrier guide, 
and hold the prosthetic in place and then loot and then pick up. Now you might say, well, how am I gonna pick up now the bite's closed? Well, we have a technique for that. Uh, you can either drill holes, which actually are an option with our, when you're uploading to, to, to choose that option. You can drill ports, uh, one on each hole, one on each site, and then just inject facially for the pickup material. Or, you know, here's, here's the shim technique. This is a, a really poor video, my apologies. But on this case, the doctor needed to lift the posterior up into occlusion to meet the opposing and then backfill underneath. Now, uh, we, we know that having a gap on the mandible is okay. It's perfectly acceptable. So you would, uh, let, me, let me play this video. So holding it in place. Right. Yep. Oh, there. Kind of shims it, you know, it's like a instant shim. I like it. Jeez, it's like a video from the 70s. Uh, it works. It works really well. You know, in this case, a little shim uh, could have helped, right? Lift it into place and really no harm done. If, if for some reason the patient's bite is, is, is really open, far open, you know, three, four, five millimeters, then maybe you meet it halfway. Adjust some occlusion down to where the bite is close and then shim it. So it's a, just a nice, uh, nice trick when you're, when you're in the thick of it. Uh, must dos. Uh, you know, we we send out some of these prosthetics with a little bit of a long cantilever. Now, this is more of a demonstration because really the important cantilever uh, to limit is on the prosthetic. Uh, for instance, this case, uh, this 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 cantilever was probably going too far. It's going back to make contact with this, uh, you know, with this tooth. Um, it was a choice, doctor chose, and it's perfectly fine, uh, you know, to make that choice. Our recommendation is uh, to not have more than eight millimeters, perhaps 10 millimeters from the center of the implant, from the center of the hole back. No more than eight to 10 millimeters. Now I put five millimeters cantilever here. That was old. We had five for a while and uh, we just had a lot of a negative feedback that there was just no prosthetic distal to the cylinder. So we've raised this up to eight to 10, kind of depending on the case, AP, that kind of thing. Um, but suggestion is to take the measurement and just grind it back in the mouth if you find that it's uh, that's more than what you're comfortable with. Now this is a rapid appliance on the top right here. So this is okay that this has a cantilever because this is going to have a reline impression in six months to pick up the ridge. Um, but the prosthetic, just be careful with cantilevers. You know, this is uh, more of an up-to-date slide, eight to 10 millimeters, no more. Aesthetics can be compromised for longevity. That's a conversation with the patient. You know, hey, we are going to have more cantilever. We're going to have more teeth added on the bottom right image uh, at the time of final restoration. We promise. But for the longevity of the prosthetic, uh, we don't want to do long cantilevers. Uh, another tip, we, we always include a silicone bite. So if you're having a, a challenge with uh, seeding a prosthetic, you know, occlusion was rough when the case started occlusion is rough during the surgery. Um, this is made in an open articulated uh, case. All right, so we open the articulator, make a silicone bite, send that to surgery, upper and lower fit into it perfectly, and that will help seat the prosthetic in the right, in the right position. Never add uh, material above the cylinders uh, or, or add, well, I'll, I'll show another one about the flange, uh, but I say never, I say, try not to bring up material around the prosthetic, uh, around the temporary cylinders. Tissue goes here, sutured tissue goes in this area and this material will be forced to displace the tissue and it can make the seating of the appliance really tough. Um, this case here, just far too much material added to the intaglio. It's okay that there's a space, you know, even in the, even in the maxilla, uh, with freeway airspace, uh, the yes, the patient's going to complain for uh, a period of time, uh, but after integration, it could it could come out at that time and add to it. Uh, you could even do it perhaps earlier post surgically, but this is tough to insert, putting pressure on the tissue. Here, you can see this image here. Now this this is choice. We have uh, we have some doctors who you know they're going to grind this back a little bit, but they just had too much material. We think, uh, but 
guess it can be, you know, doctor by doctor. Our suggestion is don't do it. Uh, don't allow the temp cylinder to contact the prosthetic. This is very important. We don't want any uh, off angle uh, pressure on an implant. It must be passive. There must be a gap here. And that would be, you would notice that when you're seating the appliance in the mouth um, and then take it out of the mouth and make an adjustment. So temporary cylinder touching the carrier guide, that's an indicator that something may end up touching the prosthetic. Watch out for that site. Um, I think this image, is, this, this circle is really in the wrong place, but there's just gaps. You can see part of the temporary cylinder here. Um, you know, one of the tricks to putting the, to inserting temporary cylinders, if they're a little bit off angle here and they're, they're, and a few of them are off angle, you can still insert the temp cylinders that are parallel, that are straight, and then seat the prosthetic over them. And then from the occlusal, you can deliver a temporary cylinder down through the hole uh, and, and have it engage the multi-unit abutment passively, as opposed to trying to, uh, trying to deliver the prosthetic over divergent temp cylinders. A little different technique. It helps in some situations. Uh, and then again, don't allow the uh, temp cylinder. In this case, it's a, no, 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 that's a temp cylinder with just some long screws. But again, it's contacting the prosthetic and we want to avoid that. So one thing you'll notice with our, with our cases, you know, our, our goal is to make these as, as aesthetic as possible, uh, as functional as possible. We don't want to make them too bulky. Uh, this is, um, this case, we did not have much choice. Uh, we couldn't just bulk it out because of the size of the patient's uh, mouth, but you'll find the walls are very thin. And this is obviously a breaking point, right? If there's too much pressure on these molars and the temp cylinder, you might say, well, why didn't you make the, the hole a little bit smaller for the temp cylinder? Well, the issue can be often, as mentioned before, these implants are usually angled in the posterior. And so if the implant is rotated by five degrees in either way, it contacts the, temp, the, the upper temp cylinder and then you have to adjust it. Uh, so the best practice here is to make sure this is perfectly clean uh, and then use, um, use our approved products for picking it up. And that will strengthen. In fact, the, what, the, the only strength here uh, will be the, uh, the stellar material that you, that you bonded in with. So. Uh, some other do's and don'ts. This is you know, an older image. Um, I still see this occasionally. This is an older image, but this is actually making a flange to meet the tissue. I think this was, you know, a, a customary demand is to have a prosthetic meet the tissue. Uh, but after a surgery uh, like, like, like this, a full arch surgery, it does not have to. Again, don't add a flange. You know, this is actually injecting in the mouth to seal it. Uh, that just has all kinds of ramifications. So leave the gap, mind the gap. If you don't have green gaskets, be very careful with uh, a block out material. You do not want to add material to the surface of the carrier guide. If this raises up, then the, then the prosthetic will not seat fully down and you're going to have bite problems. So you wanna make sure that it's down around the cylinder below the level of the carrier guide. Uh, I, I, but this, this is actually from an earlier video. If you, if you noticed while we were showing the video of the process, um, these are temp cylinder, I'm, I'm sorry, these are impression posts, uh, open tray impression posts. And the only reason these were used is because, uh, the second set of temporary cylinders was, was not ordered for this case and you, and you really have to have them. So use temp cylinders. Those are the best. They're small. You know, these are too wide, right? These are the perfect size. Use it. Okay, so that was the conversion. That was a conversion of uh, the nano ceramic. And just quickly, I wanna talk about backup dentures. Uh, we make beautiful um, uh, dentures here at the lab, either printed or conventional if you want. We, we, that's not a standard. Our standard would be just a simple $149 backup denture, the one on the right, very aesthetic. It's very nice, pretty strong. Uh, it will last, you can do relines on it. The one on the left is a milled PMMA. 
Now, the reason we offer a couple different ones is if you are performing a double arch surgery and you want backup dentures, we highly recommend that you order the PMMA uh, dentures. Uh, in fact, uh, there's, that, that's going to change a little bit because of the prosthetics that we're now um, fabricating for, um, for the prosthetic for surgery. But you want the pink and the teeth to match the prosthetic in the mouth. So in other words, if you completed a maxillary and the mandibular did not go or vice versa, you want the teeth to match. You want the prosthetics to match. So order a, a milled PMA. It's a little bit more. This is a 300 each arch. This is 149. Um, so that's an important consideration. You know, different materials look different, right? Everybody knows that, but it's uh, especially so in resins. You know, printed resin on the bottom, PMA on top. So we'll pick the right one. Converting to a final. Uh, we kind of went through that slide of the long slog from, uh, from a conventional denture conversion into the final. And it's a, that's, a, that's, a, that's a long process, even a couple of months or more. We make this very simple. We have two main options. The left is the iJig, a digital version, and then the rapid appliance, the analog version. So let's go through the analog one first. This one is, uh, is, is, is very popular, very popular. This is the second pickup at surgery. So whenever you uh, order your parts for surgery, always order two sets of temporary cylinders because you're going to do two pickups. You're going to pick up the nanoceramic prosthetic, take that back into the lab, fill the holes, polish it. And while that one is being um, readied to be delivered, uh, the doctor will put a second set of temporary cylinders in the mouth and pick up the rapid appliance. We make this in tooth color. Uh, we make it somewhat aesthetic so that when the patient comes back in in six months and tries it in, that it looks nice. And, uh, and this is the key to the final restoration. So I have a little brief video of, um, of what a rapid, a rapid appliance looks like after they've been picked up. So this is upper and lower rapids. Uh, the doctor actually added a little bit of pink on these, uh, but everything we need to do, everything we need to make a final restoration is in the rapid. You see, upper prosthetic, lower prosthetic, implants have been indexed during surgery. They're equilibrated, it's a bite registration. We go right to a, uh, a, a prototype and right into the final. I have a few more do's and don'ts. Forgive me for putting this a little bit out of order. Uh, do's and don'ts, leave the distal flange during pickup. If there is a distal flange like this, leave it, don't remove it if it's in the rapid appliance. This is gonna help with the uh, pickup impression down the road. Uh, at least index three implants. So this is important. If for some reason you're, you're, you're out of time, uh, the patient is uh, not comfortable, anesthesia, that type of thing, at least index three of the rapid appliance. Uh, and then it's easy to come back and pick up the other three in this instance and move on. Little trick. Uh, and you'll always pick up um, both prosthetics. On the left is an anesthetic prosthetic, and on the right is the rapid appliance. You want to pick up both. Okay, now, forgive me. I mentioned that there are two ways, two methods of restoring a chrome guided smile case. Okay, there's probably lots of methods. These are the two methods that we promote and that we include in our package. One of them is the iJig, uh, the iJig technology. Uh, for this, uh, this is a digital process. This is uh, using your digital impressions to scan a prosthetic outside the mouth, scan the tissue, scan everything. Um, it's revolutionary. It's amazing. Doctors love it. These are, these are special analogs that we provide. They match with any uh, Nobel compatible multi-unit abutment. Uh, we have, uh, that's important to know if your system is, is compatible or not. We have to have that discussion. But you take these, you, we, we work with all digital impression machines, anyone out there on the market. And what you do is you remove the prosthetic from the mouth you screw in our iJig scan analogs, you hold this appliance in your fingers, and you scan it, you digitize it outside the mouth. Then you take the appliance and you screw it back in the mouth, and you scan the opposing, scan the bite, and you hit send. Now, before you scan this, you scan the arch. This is how we pick up the tissue. So there's two events. The first event is Scan the tissue, scan the MUAs, hit send. The second event is scan the IG prosthetic, scan the opposing, scan the bite, 
and off it goes. Give us a shade. So a video of what we do. So this is the first scan that the doctor sent in, right? All the land areas, all the tissue, uh, don't need the palate. Uh, in fact, the palate's kind of tough to scan. Scan the prosthetic. These are non-Nobel um, compatible um, uh, analogs that you see here. We work with many different companies on this, but this is what we receive digitally. So this is, this is sent digitally. We take the file from the original workup from six months ago that we did that we made the surgery, we, we introduce it back into your scan and then we make uh, the iJig from that. This is now the iJig, right? And since we have the tissue scan, we manipulate and push the iJig to the tissue to close the gaps. Kind of a neat technique. See, so you, you think, think, of, think of fit verification jig and bite block. Right, that appointment. That appointment is just not very exciting. Uh, looting all those parts together, taking a bite, kind of starting from scratch. This is essentially a fit verification jig, but instead of a bite block, it's teeth and a jig all combined together. Check this out. This is the eye jig. The eye jig was what you just saw it digitally. This is analog. These slits are made here so that you can screw this down on each of the abutments, hold it in the mouth uh, with this tray. Put a screw in each one. This, just use the screws that the patient has been wearing in their prosthetic and, instead of new screws because this is just temporary. And then you backfill, inject. I have a little step-by-step -step here in a second. You inject to pick up each of the sections and you connect them together. So here's, here's the real quick sequence. I jig right here. You put some tray adhesive on it. Screw the sections all the way down in the mouth. Remove, uh, remove the guard, and then run a little floss through them to make sure they're fully seated. Take an x-ray if needed to make sure that they are totally down and passive. And then here's some more of this stellar material again. Loot the sections together. Here we are, they're all looted together. Take a bite, right? Do a reline impression if needed, if there's a gap, and send this to us. And from this, from those records, uh, we have everything we need to make a prototype for the final, right? Bite, opposing, um, reline impression, uh, teeth, implants, index, everything from one simple appointment. iJig is just a, a brilliant, marvelous product. So this is what it looks like. And then on the right, this is what we will send you. Uh, a digital reset based on the changes that you and the patient wanna make to the prosthetic and then go to final from that. The printed try-in, is a prototype. You would screw this down, do a one screw test, make sure it's passive, it doesn't rock. Uh, you could do a reline impression if you need to, if there's any gaps, equilibrate perfectly, perfectly, take a bite and then return it for final. That is the iJig process, that's the digital process. And let's talk about the analog uh, rapid appliance, which has become very popular because of its simplicity. So. Two pickups, right? Pick up the prosthetic, pick up the rapid appliance, kind of go through these quick since we've been through it. So the patient, this is four to six months post-op. Patient comes in, prosthetics from surgery come out. The rapid appliance that you picked up at surgery goes in, right? Equilibrated perfectly, complete a reline impression. And then some cases go right to final right? Instead of doing a printed try. In some cases, you go right for, if it's close enough, patient likes it, patient acceptance, go to final. We can even do some minor changes. This is what it looks like when it comes in. Again, everything we need to go to the final restoration or a prototype, right? There's the prototype. There is his final restoration. This is a Nice partner of ours over here in Youngstown, Ohio, Dr. Don Cellis does a great job of documenting these cases. But look at this happy patient, right? Top left started, bottom right is where he is now. Different man, different world for this guy. Uh, and these are the steps. So rapid appliance, uh, pickup, uh, prototype, and then off to the final restoration. Appliance, and then in our package, 
uh, when we, when we, when you purchased a full Chrome package from us, you have three main options for final restoration. It's the top left TLZIB, uh, that's translithic zirconia. That's a full zirconia, uh, stained with, uh, with Mio, uh, prosthetic. They're, they're beautiful. We've made thousands. We have a team, we have a full arch team. That's all they do is make these all day. Uh, and they are very talented. The middle is a nano, uh, it's actually ultra nano IB implant bridge. This is on a trilore bar, uh, which is kind of like, like a composite Kevlar material. And then on the right, uh, I don't show a picture of it, but that's on a titanium bar. So those are the three main options. And that is today's program. I, I hope you have questions. Uh, that was a lot of, uh, that was a lot of information to cover in a short amount of time. Let's do, let's do Q and A. Uh, JDL, make sure your shims are right and hold, do not make denture thin or will break. You do not want to remove a temp abutment during, during double time. Absolutely. Very important, John JDL. If, if you, uh, it, you take whatever measure you can to make sure that the temp cylinders, especially on the, on the terminal implants, right? The distal most implants are picked up. The material is used properly. You have the instructions, you know how to use the material and you, and you do it perfectly. That's the difference between, um, uh, breakage and non-breakage on a, on a prosthetic. Our prosthetics are very strong and we have very few come back. Uh, but a small percentage of them, even if they're, even if it's a small percentage, they're disastrous for the patient. You know that, 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 that that's right. So, um, Let's see. So to confirm with common version, the burr numbers aren't necessarily because they are part of the Chrome specific package kit. Uh, well, Comet, Comet burrs, we do sell, and you'll see them on our website on the shop. Uh, we sell composite burr kits. Yes. Uh, they, are, they, are they part of a Chrome specific prepackage kit? Yes, absolutely. Uh, we have uh, the whole surgical burr kit and a prosthetic burr kit that we've kind of worked out and refined uh, after going clinically for a couple thousand of these. So I'd highly recommend using that kit. Uh, I believe, oh, here we go. Thanks, Jordan Taub, uh, mentioning, yep, we have the kits. Uh, and there are, they're actually, they're available online as of this week when we opened up our shop. And um, there are some codes, yes, there are some codes there on the chat if you folks want to write them down. Thanks, Jordan. With temp breakage, is it worthwhile considering cast metal reinforcement in, in crown and bridge temps? Uh, thanks, Samuel. You've been, in, been on here all week, I believe. Thanks for that question. Uh, you know, we have an option. In fact, um, here, chrome reinforcement. So this is something that's available. We'll make it. All right, nice reinforcement. It'll make that prosthetic last uh, for years. But if you have a divergent implant on an angled and you have to cut through chrome cobalt during surgery, it's not fun. Uh, so we don't make it as a standard. It's an extra, it's $150. This is SLM. So we have this printed uh, and polished and go through the whole standards of all of the rest of our metal. Uh, so that is an option. Yes, you would just have to order it that way. Uh, I may have missed it, but could you go over the cost on the different packages. Oh, thank you for that. I, <clears throat> excuse me, um, I have not discussed price except on the JC try-in uh, in the first meeting and a little bit of pricing today. I, forgive me, I don't want to talk about pricing on online. We have a, we have a, uh, a what I think is a very competitive package um, you have the option of purchasing just for the day of surgery or for the full package from smile simulation all the way to the guard at the end in six months, prosthetic and everything. Uh, I think doctors are actually kind of shocked um, that we can include all that for the price that we do. We, we, we do not include uh, implants and parts and cylinders and abutments. We don't force you to do that. Uh, I think there are companies out there that do. We do not. 
and we work with all different implant companies out there. And so the pricing can change a little bit based on componentry, based on implant, com uh, uh, based on implant systems. Uh, we do offer third party parts in, in, in some of these packages and that can drastically affect the cost of it in your advantage. So my suggestion is uh, contact Chris. We are certainly not hiding pricing in a one-on-one -on -one conversation. So email him or email me. I'm Alan at rodentalab.com. Uh, be very forthright with, with pricing. So 